Welcome to one of these, another one of these little silly reflection videos. Uh, now I'm doing this for purely selfish reasons. Uh, I love what I've done with this miniature. It's one of those rare instances where once I finish painting it, I feel satisfied. Uh, when I posted online, it didn't get too much of a reaction though. And that bummed me out. So I'm going to keep spamming this and make a video about it, how great this is and how great I am <laughs> to see whether I gain more attention. Because I really love how this turned out. I've used a variety of different... Okay, enough blown smoke up. I want to ask. Uh, let's have a look at the miniature himself. Emperor Gut. So this is my corpse grinder cult leader. Uh, this is a conversion made from uh, the uh, corpse grinder cult kit, uh, which was released around Christmas 2019. Big, big ass set. Still haven't put it together. And it, this was made from the Nurgle Champion from Warhammer Fantasy or uh, AOS. Uh, the actual conversion itself wasn't too demanding. It was just sticking things next to one another and then smoothing things out with uh, Milliput. Uh, so his stomach especially. Uh, by uh, mixing up Milliput and green stuff together in different quantities, you can make a thing... Uh, you can make a thing called uh, Milliput Wash. So when you apply it over the miniature, uh, when you kind of bed it in to cover up the surface you're, you're looking to cover up, um, by using a clay shape over the top with water, you can kind of smooth things out a lot more than you could by just using green stuff alone. If you haven't tried it before, highly recommend it. Uh, so the actual conversion work wasn't that demanding. Uh, the base is taken from the Necromunda uh, set. Uh, you you put a little gribbly thing in here, like a, a tentacle. Uh, filled it with skulls, as you do. And then popped him on top. Now, you'll notice this surreptitious rock here because he didn't fit quite flush. Um, so I had to put an additional rock there to make it look like anything. Okay, for the actual colour scheme itself. Uh, it was largely determined by uh, the force I painted. Um, lots of coppery tones, highlighted unusually with light silver turquoise. Now this is something I do a lot with my Necromunda miniatures. The skin, the hair, anything I use to highlight the miniature, I'll incorporate a small amount of Thunderhawk blue into the highlight. Why is that? Well, I don't imagine there's much natural sunlight in the Underhive. It's all fluorescent or unusual lighting. In this case, I want to play with fluorescent lighting. So all the colors will have some tinge of turquoise to them. There are no pure colors used on this miniature. All the colors are corrupted in some way. I'm sure there's a metaphor in there somewhere for Necromunda and society, our society. Um, it's kind of like a build your own metaphor. Go ahead, go, go forth and prosper. But in this piece, uh, so look at the uh, red loincloth, for example. The highlights, been built up uh, with light skin tones and then incorporated with a touch of Thunderhawk blue to highlight it even further. The uh, leather straps around his arms. I'm rather proud of this because I've managed to develop that highlight which is made with Ice Yellow by Vallejo. Small amount of uh, Thunderhawk blue at the top and white. Uh, that isn't. We mix pure white into colours for contrast. We don't leave it pure white. We don't use pure white in anything or, or, or pure black. Uh, and that's kind of threaded its way down. Uh, if you look at his left arm, you can kind of see the brush stroke I've employed back and forth, uh, like a almost like a tiny tornado. And that overlaps the blue to black at the top of his arm to the red at the base. It's as if this leather has had so much, it's bathed in so much blood that's been corrupted forever. The uh, A lot of the... Uh, sediment that's built up around his armor plate has been made with um, I believe it's Flake King uh, realistic weathering materials uh, so this these are kind of like powders and pigments that you apply to miniature you spray a saline solution I believe it is over the miniature and it actually uh, causes rust so this base here that's actual rust that you can see on the base the black and over time it will continue to develop the rust will continue to evolve which I think is such a cool concept, especially to apply to this. You have these really warm oranges playing off against the cool creams and uh, turquoise highlights to the top of the miniature. As 
far as color balance go, everything is is balanced off against one another. You have the orange, then you have notes of orange up here and here. You have green with turquoise, green with turquoise. So everything is balanced in relation to one another. The skin tone starts with a very uh, darkish cadian flesh tone with purple added to it, and it's built up with notes of yellow in those top highlights to not only suggest fluorescent lighting above, but an unhealthy diet. Uh, this guy's he he's not long for this world. Naturally, I think the more he consumes, the more the longer he live. Because that's how this universe works. Um, the blood effects themselves, they've done with the Tamiya trick, um, which you can find everywhere. You, there, there are several videos on my um, uh, Patreon uh, covering this. But, it's, it's, yeah, it's one of those paint jobs that is, it, it... With my paint jobs, I always aim to try and present the dirt beneath the fingernails. And I love that concept, and that's what I wanted to present here. And I think I managed to achieve that with this miniature. It's, it's very rare that I feel that. Uh, his hood. I originally painted it green, I think, but really didn't work whatsoever. Um, so I had the... Uh, and the balance of the miniature was off. So I decided to mirror this dead flesh with his flesh, which looked remarkably alike. So you have the, uh, I guess, uh, the, the link that his flesh is dead, that he... When he's eating people, he's stitched together this little mask. And, uh, yeah, I mean, what are these little bumps emanating from the underneath of his hood? I want to suggest some manner of change that he's trying to cover up. Some mutation, maybe. Uh, the actual armour plate itself, you can see it's very visceral, it's very grimdark. Uh, this is built up over several successive layers of stippling. That's that's how you build up this kind of texture. You do not worry whatsoever about the blend of the piece. Rather, it's stipple, 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 stipple. And you get some really nice effects by doing that. Uh, to create that stippling effect, you can alternate between a sponge. So you can take a sponge, uh, the foam from your case, sponge that on, and a brush. Uh, take an older brush and give it a really bad haircut. And you now have a stippling brush. Okay, can I see this full screen? Yeah, it's one of those pieces that really just, just came together so nicely. Um, the uh, banner thing at the back. So this is a cult icon that he hangs heads on. Uh, it gives him in-game benefits. Uh, but more so than that, I wanted to incorporate a little bit more green into uh, the base of... It could be misleading, sure, but I think it, the composition of it works. Uh, there's a lot of green and turquoise used there. And I guess it's the most saturated part of the miniature as well, apart from the helmet and the blood flex itself. But that was created with a base tone of uh, a very dark green worked up with yellow with uh, uh, turquoise glazed right the hell the way down and glazed in between the rafters to make it look um, kind of like, like this area has been sunken under water for a long time. Uh, the green is reflected on these um, glass vials. And this is a little bit of bugbear of mine. Why do would you have glass vials in such a delicate place? But that's just Warhammer, right? If if logic came into this universe, we wouldn't have anywhere near the amount of fun that we do. Uh, so some of that weathering powder we use, we have used down here. So the Flake King stuff. Uh, it's not only orange rust; it's verdigris as well. So that's what was used to create this section. Yeah, everything on here is, is dirty and grimy and horrid and just really depressing. Um, alongside this miniature, I've written a little short story. Uh, so if you did want to read this, check out littlelegendstudio.com uh, blo slash blog slash emperor gut dash etc. Just look at littlelegendstudio.com and you'll find it. Um, I have a bunch of corpse grinder tutorials ready and ready to go. So if you wanted to know how exactly how you apply that stipple, how you apply the blood effects, how you paint that goddamn miniature, it's right there. It's right there ready, ready and ready to go right now. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it. And 
I, I hope you give something like this a go. Working with textures, it's the new frontier. Okay, thank you very much, guys. Uh, any requests for videos, please let me know. If you have any questions, I'd love to do a Q&A session. Ask me, or AMA, ask me anything. Ask me what my favourite colour is. And I'll reply. Okay, thanks very much, guys. Bye.